Oh boy, I, uh, <laughs> I'm in Hollywood now. They, there's a real specific look that you need for Hollywood to make it. Uh, but I have this weird, I have this 29 year old baby face, but I have the receding hairline of a 49 year old construction worker. I don't know. <laughs> I hope that makes it on television. Look at that. I have these two cul de sacs. <laughs> <laughs> separated by this lush forest here. And if you listen closely, you can hear the Homeowners Association. They have a five-year project where they're gonna tear all these trees down <laughs> and put it, make it one big cul-de-sac. I think it drops the property value, but I'm not in real estate, so what do I know? But they're gonna make it a classy place to live by making it a gated community back in that area. <laughs> Fence them all in. Why me? Comedy's making me worse. It's, I think it's aging me like the presidency. I'm starting, to, I'm starting to get like, I'm starting to be like those old people who just say whatever's on their mind. You ever talk to an old person who never thinks before they start talking? You ask an old person how they're feeling, they just start telling you which race they hate the most. You're like, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> I just asked if you were hungry, why do you hate the Chinese so much? Good Lord, Nana. I'm starting to get like that. Like I hang around comedians, I have no normal people left in my life. Zero normal people. I hang around nothing but comics. It's terrible, it's like smoking for your soul. We're just terrible to each other. All we do is make fun of each other. Here's, about, here's the problem I have now, I'm 29. Here's the hair problems I'm having now, okay? So it's falling out really aggressively in the front. It's just bad, it's like rats jumping ship. But then in the back, it grows real. I had to get a haircut for the show because it gets really, mad scientist in the back. It fro I get half an afro in the back like a chia pet. It gets really thick. It looks awful. And then I walk into the comedy club after like this big puffy hairdo. I see my best friend Jay, who's another comedian. He sees me, no hello, no pleasantries. As soon as I'm within earshot, he goes, oh, Kane, maybe think about springing for a haircut. You're starting to look like a counselor at Magic Camp. I'm like, that seems uncalled for, but Accurate, that was a good one. <laughs> like, here's how I know I had, to, I had to tone it down. I had to really pump the brakes on it. You know, TBD, brakes, TBB, T yeah, whatever. That's, that's not gonna make TV, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was an inside joke for my friend and I fucked it up, no. <laughs> anyway, so my, uh, my, girlfriend, my girlfriend wants to go on this bar crawl, right? And uh, she wants to, of course in a bar crawl, I invite my friends, I only know comedians. She invites all her friends and all her friends come over first. So they all, all the girls are coming over first and I have to be in the house with these girls. And they're trading clothes, they're painting each other's faces, they're doing shots. It's like this girl tailgate party. I've never seen anything <laughs> like it. And so I, I, I'm in comedy mode, full comedy mode. I see this one girl, her best friend, Kelly. She's this beautiful girl with a ton of confidence and I'm like, it's time to take this bitch down. <laughs> Oh, she is going down. So I walk up to her and she's got this big giant belt wrapped around her waist. I don't know if you've seen this things that girls with these belts that girls have. This girl, it started at the bottom of her boobs, this belt, and, and then ended at the top of her vagina. It was like a melted down riot shield that was strapped. And then she had, the belt buckle was the size of a semi truck steering wheel. And I walk right up to her, no hello, no pleasantries. I go, Kelly, wow, that is a hell of a back brace. Are you helping somebody move later? <laughs> what did you just say to me? Take it easy, Floyd Mayweather. I was just wondering why you're, I was just wondering why your belt's so big. I, are we going to a Mad Max Halloween party? I don't understand. I got her twice. This girl had no chance. So 10 minutes later, I'm hanging out in my bedroom and, uh, and I'm loving it. I'm texting Jay about it. I'm like, hey, we're going on this bar crawl. You should come over. Uh, the door is open. Whenever you get here, just walk in. I press send. As soon as I press send, that's when my girl walks into the bedroom and she's like, what in the hell is the matter with you? Why would you make fun of Kelly like that? She, is, she feels terrible. And I'm like, oh, is she upset that I keep making fun of the horse saddle she's got wrapped around her waist? <laughs> When we get to the bar, should we tie her up to the post out front so she doesn't go wandering around? Hey, get back here, Kelly. Get back here. She's like, knock it off, I'm serious. 
She can't take it. She's in there crying. She wants to throw the belt away. Yeah, yeah. I've never, I've never made fun of somebody so bad they wanted to throw clothing away. I was on my game that night. I was, I was doing good. But on the outside, I was like, oh, okay. So she's like, fix this right now. So I walk out to the living room, and I see her, and she's, <laughs> she's crying. All the girls are huddled around her. It's okay. It looks like somebody told her that somebody had murdered her like puppy with her belt. And uh, <laughs> they just keep coming. What am I supposed to do, not say them? <laughs> so, so I see her, and I'd have to do my best acting now. I walk up, and I'm like, Kelly, listen, I'm really sorry for what I said about you and your belt. I'm really, I really am sorry. And she's like, no. What? Why would you talk to another person like that? That's so mean. And I'm like, oh, Kelly, I'm really sorry. Like, I didn't, I didn't mean anything by it. I'm a comic, and you're, like, you're my girlfriend's best friend. I, I feel no pressure to talk to you. You know, I, I'm, I'm really sorry for what I said. I, any guy that sees you for the rest of the night is going to have nothing but compliments. I promise. I swear to God. Please, come on. Give me a hug. Stand up. Give me a hug. We're going to have a great night. And she stands up, and we hug, and then she pulls back. And she says, thanks. And as the S is coming off of thanks, that's when Jay comes walking into the living room. And he's like, oh my god, Kelly. Finally decided to get your scoliosis fixed, huh? <laughs> Boom! We're not good people. It's not, we shouldn't take joy in that. It's just sometimes being a jerk, a, like being a comedian can kind of get you out of stuff like that. Like, because here's my thing. I was like, I just want us all to take accountability for our actions. That's it. You know, maybe we'll all get along. Who knows? I'm not, I, I might be wrong. But I had this woman who backed into my car recently. She hits my car, and then she gets out of her car, and she starts screaming and yelling at me that I didn't give her enough room to get out of her parking space. So I tried to do this with a straight face. And I walked right up to her, very calm, and I was like, ma'am, listen, I understand you're upset. I really do. But any good driver worth their salt could have gotten out of this spot without hitting me. Okay, and when I say a good driver, I mean a man. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, boy. <laughs> she was not happy. I understand, and I'm getting a lot of eyes from the ladies in the audience. I get it. I get it. And before you want to rally together, yes, all women mean, let's run them down in the parking lot. Hold on. I don't believe that as a fact. I said it for two reasons. Number one, it was funny. It was funny. I got her. But number two, and this is the most important lesson, okay? She hit me. Then she started screaming and yelling at me that it was my fault. She's not my mom, and she's not my wife. So I don't have to listen to a word this woman says ever. Do you understand that that's what moms and wives are for, to make you feel bad about stuff that's not your fault? Now, <laughs> now hold on. Don't pull back. Hold on. I want to see if this makes TV. I don't believe it. I'm not a misogynist that I, I'm trying to convince you of. Now, I, there is that stereotype, women are bad drivers. I didn't make it up, okay? But there are, there are men out there that think that way. So let's debunk it right now for every, everybody in this room. Who is the top female NASCAR driver working today? Danica Patrick, that's right. Do you know how many wins she has? Zero, she sucks. She can't even go in a circle. Okay, okay. I set you up for that one. That's my bad. Here's what I'll, I'll speak from personal experience. I don't think women are bad drivers. Here's what I will say about, especially the girl I'm dating now, is sometimes her, I'll say her, not the most observant driver, okay? And I think that's what's great about women in general, is you are observing life. Guys, we don't do that. We're all about how we, how we you ever see, guys, like when I go grocery shopping, I hate the grocery store. When I see my, I go, my girl drags me to the grocery store, she loves the grocery store. I'm, when I'm there at the grocery store, I'm like, all right, I got steak, I got cheese, let's get the hell out of here. I can't take it. 
But when I go with my girl to the grocery store, she's like, okay, we're gonna need cotton balls. Look at that dog. Oh my God, the flower arrangements. What's your baby's name? I'm like, we've been here a million times. Are you taking a tour of the grocery store? Let's go! But that's not good when you're driving. I don't like when I'm in the passenger seat, kind of nodding off, and she's in the, in the driver's seat, driving along, and I don't have to pay attention, because I'm not in the commander's seat, and then all of a sudden I hear her go, Aah! and I'm like, Aah! what happened? What? Did we hit a deer? Are we dead? She's like, no, silly, there's a cherry stand two miles up the road. Like, the hell, are you out of your mind? Dude, I peed my pants. Why did you scream like we were driving into a tornado? Because it's, it's $2 a pound. You can't get that anywhere. There's an outlet mall right next to the, the cherry stand. We can get you new pants while we're at it. You want to do that? I'd rather be in an accident, to tell you the truth. Thank you guys very much.